The Joint Admission and Matriculation Board JAM has announced the introduction of computer studies and health education as part of its unified tertiary matriculation examinations, the UTME subjects. Uh, recently added, released the TAM table for the UTME and direct entry registration examinations. Now, what this means is that candidates sitting for the UTME could now pick computer studies or physical and health education as part of the four requirements of subject if they so desire or dictated by the program of preference. The two subjects, in addition to the existing 23 UTME subjects, brings a total number of subjects to 25 and expected to commence from the 2022 uh, UTME exercise. Joining us this morning to make sense of all of this is an educational consultant. He is Dr. Peter Ogudoro. It's good to have you join us this morning. It's, it's my pleasure to join you on the show. All right, Dr. Peter Gudor, let, let's um, you know share your thoughts on this. What's the implication of having uh, two subjects added to the curriculum for JAM candidates? Well, this has been long overdue. Uh, this is a society that is in the 21st century, and the uh, computer is uh, the basis upon which our, we live our lives now. And I'm, I'm surprised that it took them this long to recognize that computer studies is a subject that young people should be examined on, especially for those who want to study computer science, computer engineering. So why haven't you been given them the option, you know, to, to have that subject as one of the options they could use uh, to get into university? Uh, physical and health education is also critical because uh, we need to be fit, especially now that we are talking about we are living in the era of pandemic. And so these are subjects that give us, give um, young people the opportunity to, to learn how to eat well, to learn how to exercise their bodies, to learn how to keep fit. So it took too long for us to get to where we are. But thank God they have eventually arrived. Interestingly, um, having only 25 subjects is, is certainly not enough because we have been talking about giving young people the opportunity to acquire skills which they can use to set up their own businesses. We, have, we offer several other courses that are not in the UTME uh, 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 you know, list in terms of subjects that young people can, 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 can sit for. And that's not fair. Uh, we, should, we should introduce almost all the subjects that WIAC and NECO examine young people for so that they can uh, exercise uh, the discretion and freedom to make their own choices. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Ogodoro, you, you've highlighted the importance of um, these two new subjects of physical education, uh, computer science, and you said it's, it's taken too long to have had this, uh, these subjects in the JAM curriculum. Um, what, what do you think this says about the state of education in Nigeria, that the apex tertiary admission examination organization or body does not have computer studies, computer studies in 2022 as part of the subjects for examination. I mean, that, that's, that's absurd. I, I never, never thought about that. Why, what does it say about the state of education in Nigeria from a curriculum, you know, perspective? Yeah, yeah. The problem they have had in the education industry is the burden of bureaucracy. For them to make a change, and they, you have to convene meetings at different levels. The board has to uh, meet as a as a board, uh, and then hold meetings over several years to agree on that. And when they agree, they now have to make submission to the Federal Ministry of Education, who will uh, agree with them. Probably send it to National Council of Education, who will endorse it, and then they start climbing that again before it gets back to jam. So that kind of bureaucracy doesn't go well for the kind of society we want to build. We want to build an agile society that is globally competitive. Unfortunately, politicians run the education space, and most of them didn't study education and do not understand that education is, uh, you know, the, 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 begin, the beginning point for, 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 for accelerated development. Unfortunately, we find uh, politicians who haven't gone to proper schools running the system and why the professors take instructions from them. And that's obviously not, not the kind of situation we need to maintain. So I think that the problem they have had is the bureaucracy, which has been very burdensome for introducing reforms in the education system. And until we are able to recognize that this is where development should begin, we will continue to have this kind of challenge. So, so what becomes of, uh, you know, the students or candidates who will be sitting for this examination? 
you also want to agree with me that, you know, to some extent you have several schools that don't have the facility, what it takes to um, educate or, you know, lecture the student on computer studies. We're talking about having a practical labs where you can have monitors, you can have the keyboards, you can have the mouse. I remember at a time where I was told to imagine in front of me that I had a monitor and just imagine a student who have not seen a monitor. So what becomes of the student who would have to sit for this examination without having the necessary um, you know, facilities and what it takes to study this course? Well, this is a case of you know, half bread being better than none. You have to recognize that before these young people you know, got to this point where they have the option of computer science, they, those who wanted to, for example, study computer science didn't even have it as, a choice, as, as one of the options at all. So uh, those people were compared, for example, to, to go for physics or for chemistry or for biology, which are more difficult options compared to computer science, which they have already sat for and probably a one and uh, uh, we must also put it on, on the table that the exam they are going to write doesn't require uh, much of practical knowledge. And there is hardly any school here that even uh, insists on practical knowledge. And the examination bodies that have given them the WAEC uh, and the NECO uh, results don't do much of practical. So much of, most of what we talk about in Nigeria is just theory. The, these children get into the hall for UTME and they, are, they respond to about 40 uh, 40 multiple choice questions. No practical is involved of any kind. So it's not easy. That, that, that is uh, so the, so the practical right. questions don't come in as practical. They come in in the questions as questions. I mean, you have to answer yes, them. Yes, so they yes, set them yes. as an example in the questions. That's very correct. So they just, uh, you know, if it, maybe they ask you what, 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 what uh, which of the following is, is an input device. And so they, they tell you a keyboard, they tell you a cable, they tell you, uh, you know, uh, they tell you a mouse. And that kind of, so you just select one. So you don't need to, you don't need to know. So for a student, my question, my concern here is for a student who does not know what an input device looks like or who's never seen it, uh, how do they now answer the question? You don't need to. You don't need to have seen it to answer the question correctly. You only need to have read it somewhere to, and then have a good memory to remember it to respond that's correctly a, to that's it. That's how we all did that's it. That's the way we have done it in Nigeria. So you <laughs> even those who have degrees in, in engineering and in, in, in some sense even medicine, they will tell you. I, I'm a researcher in the industry. They regularly complain to me. Even those who have had a, a young person who finished with a first class in, in electrical engineering. And who was the best graduate from, from his, from his in, in, you know, department and faculty who confessed to me that most of the things that he, he knows about engineering are just theoretical knowledge. He has never seen the equipment because most of the time, even when National University's Commission comes to, to his university to do, uh, to do accreditation, the university goes out to rent the equipment. And once those people are done with the accreditation, they return the equipment to the places they rented them from. So we are not, we haven't got it right. We don't know what we're doing as a people. And that's why the average engineer here doesn't do engineering of any kind. He teaches mathematics in the university because he hasn't seen this equipment before. Hmm. Uh, 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 Dr. Guduru, for, for, for me, looking at and hearing that we're still talking about computer studies, you know, in, in, in this day and age, it, it sounds a bit um, archaic, you know, because now we have, you know, information technology, we have, um, you know, coding, artificial intelligence, and so on and so forth. Um, is, is this the right you know, uh, um, exam to have in such a day and age? Or are they simply, in your opinion, just tailoring this, this, this uh, exam called computer studies to what we have on the ground as far as uh, the, the curriculum in several, um, in, in, a, in a secondary system is, is concerned? So they don't want to do anything outside what we have in our secondary schools, um, do you think? And if that is the case, don't we need to mix things up and, and upgrade the secondary school curriculum as, as far as computer science is concerned to, to reflect the current realities of our world today. You, you, you are, you are, you are a, a better teacher, a better educationist than most of the people running the system from the way you have spoken. Because uh, listening to you, I can see you have the awareness about how important you know, computer and, and information technology is in a modern society. Let me tell you this. If you really want to study computer science, you don't need to go to a Nigerian university because it's a waste of time. Really, the, what, is, what the level of about four years to teach you, you will learn from a local 
you know, uh, add faith, and you learn all of that in only two months. That's how the world works now. So parents who are very smart, they don't waste their children's time sending them to Nigerian universities to go and learn computer science. You enroll them, uh, you know, in one of the uh, shops in mm -hmm. your neighborhood and uh, get people to work with them on one on one. And in two months, they become people who can create apps. My my son is learning computer programming, and in, in only two months, he does better better programming than the average Nigerian university graduate who holds a degree, even with first class in computer science. That's, that's, that's the reality of our time, and that's very unfortunate for us as a people. Because even those who have passed through this system, gone to university and got a degree in it, are actually not able to do anything. And those who eventually want to become true experts in computer science after they have end degrees in Nigerian universities, they know what they do. What they do is to go and enroll you know, in roadside shops and they work with those people for only two months, and they regret spending four years trying to get what they, they, those, those places couldn't give them. We are not ready as a people. Universities here are wasting everybody's time. The things they teach in five years, we can learn in only one month if for, for parents who know what to do. All right. So, Dr. Peter, in this case now where we have, I mean, in the course of this conversation, we have emphasized the need for us to have computer studies in the curriculum. And you have rightly also stated that, I mean, we're very late at this particular one. But with yes. this introduction, it still seems that uh, the students or candidates still have an option to choose. I mean, they would have to choose between, you know, um, computer studies or health education. Don't you think that we would probably just have it where computer studies would have been just a constant? Well, this is certainly, at this stage, it's half bread, which is better than none. So instead of our not coming in at this hour, you know, coming in at this hour, even though we are not going to get it right, because the children are just going to respond to multiple choice questions, which will not prove who knows computer and who does not know it. So if you if you cram better than, than, than John, who is able to use a computer better than you, you will get into university and John won't get in there, even though he's the one who has the capacity to, 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 to be able to use computer well. So that, that's the area where we need to get, get it right. And I think that um, uh, we also need to uh, do this to several other subjects, you know, data processing, uh, textile. They have all those subjects in Waiyaka and Neko. Why are we not allowing children to go in, you know, straight into JAM, UTME, and respond to only the questions? No, and, no, and the, the question here is, is why don't we rather make it compulsory that that is actually a constant subject? If you have to choose four subjects, then you have three plus computer science. I mean, just like you have English as compulsory, mathematics as well. Computer science should also be constant. That's what I'm saying. Because you would still have people, if they have a choice of choosing, then they would always have to maybe probably have to choose or go for the health education. That's what I'm saying. I mean, juxtaposing okay. that with the importance of having computer studies in our curriculum, just like you've emphasized. Yeah. Why don't we make it yeah. compulsory then? Yeah, I, 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 I do not um, disagree with you on that. I, I, I completely agree. Um, at least it's, it would be a good starting point. But let's put this on the table. In, in proper societies, in a, in, a, in a place like the United Kingdom, Germany, you know, America, and United States of America, what our children are learning in their second year as computer science students are things children finish primary school already knowing. So you don't need to examine them on that for them to get into the world because it's taken for granted. The children learn this at home, right, at primary school level. You know, as a student, as a student in England, you know, uh, as a graduate student, I remember sometime, I, uh, there was a time I did a research on this, and I discovered that even when people get into the university from, from their homes in England, you know, to join us in the universities, most of them had already mastered the things universities were teaching, and they thought that universities were wasting their time. And so they were paid more, greater attention to things that universities were not teaching. So, um, but again, look at America, for example. America doesn't even, you know, uh, expose you to a, an exam that will require you to respond to four subjects. They res you respond to only two fundamental subjects, eh? evidence-based reason and writing, and then they examine you a math because it's taken for granted that everybody has the basic knowledge it takes to use computer to to learn and, be and benefit from higher education that is not where we are but until we are able to you know improve internet access and uh, improve income levels so that parents can also buy laptops for their children who continue to pretend that we are teaching children computer science when they are not learning anything hmm.
Interesting indeed. Uh, we have uh, a number of more questions for you because there's a lot to talk about as far as uh, the Joint Admissions Matriculation Board is concerned, especially in, in, whether it's even necessary in this day and age in Nigeria's education system. But thank you very much uh, for your time. He's an educational consultant and uh, his name is uh, uh, Peter Ogudoro. He's been our guest analyst on the second uh, uh, major topic on the breakfast this morning. Mr. Ogudoro, thank you very much uh, for your time. Dr. Ogudoro, that's important. I, I, I apologize with my hands in the air, um, uh, Dr. Godoro. I'll add a PhD at the end as well. I apologize, sir. Thank you very much for your expert analysis. Thank you, sir. Do have a great day. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And mercy, scrap jam or not, that's what I had wanted to ask you, <laughs> but no time. Uh, producers won't allow us asking, like, we'll deal with them later. But, I mean, is it even necessary? I tell you what, I, I, I've had an opportunity to be in the Ghanaian system and Nigerian system. Do more in the Nigerian system. You finish secondary school, you go to university. If you are smart, you should be able to pass your bike. And if you pass your bike, voila, I've written jam here. And people were jumping over the fence to, to pass, um, what do you call it, um, Expo. You know what I'm talking about, Mercy. Come on. <laughs> why, why you? Why are you? Why are you looking at me like you don't know what I'm talking about? People were sitting it, it, it mercenaries. You had you had even the invigilators allowing people to come in to write for other people. So the purpose is defeated, and and Jam had become over the years a stumbling block to a lot of smart Nigerian students not being able to get I totally, into university. I, I totally so, agree with so, you. So, I mean, do, uh, and do people have constantly found ways, you know, to maneuver the system and get into the system because so we have made about, that, you know, very compulsory. You know, we, we're, ex, we we're experts. But we're a developing nation, and let's just hope that we're evolving. Maybe it should be scrapped because do you know how many people remember it was? It's a prayer point. People, <laughs> and once you write it, you don't, you, you, you can't go back again. You know, so why are we placing a stumbling block on the path of our students who spend years, especially in times when things are hard, indigent students who may not be able to afford writing jump over and over and over again, why do we place a stumbling block on their path to university? So, so I'm thinking that th that would be a conversation for another, for another day. day. But, don't, but don't look at me like you don't know what people are doing. In the no, no, I do. Come but on, it, it took me some time <laughs> to even understand that. I mean, if I tell you some of the stories and experiences that I have had. Did you, I did mean, you, did you carry No, expo? I was actually arrested when I was underage. Uh, I wasn't even up to 18 because I found myself around the premise where exam was being written and it was taken away and then it was locked up for no reason. I didn't even know what that meant. They said you were around the premises. Oh I'm like, what's going on? Oh my. So I just you, stopped you by were because wondering, my cousin- You were loitering. I wasn't loitering, you, you know, know, when you had like a ward who was writing an exams and then you needed to just wait by and oh. then you guys can just get home, home together. Hey. However, oh that's my. enough. Uh, we we'll definitely come through with the conversation, of course, uh, with the jam conversation some other time where we talk about whether or not to scrap the system or um, all of the formalities and the process that we're experiencing currently. But if you missed out on any part of the conversation, it's okay to follow us on Twitter or Facebook and Instagram. It's at Plus TV Africa. And do subscribe to YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle and Plus TV Africa. I am Messi Boko. Have a fantastic Tuesday. And I'm Kofi Bartels. We'll be back tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your day. Good morning.